The Bucks lead at 17-6. Two minutes to play. The Jets at the six-yard line. It's second and goal, and they have all three of their timeouts remaining. Five wide receivers. And Testaverde has been completing them with regularity on this drive. Quick drop to the left side. Breaking the tackle is Curtis Martin into the end zone for the touchdown. Now the Jets will go for two points. But Curtis Martin, I don't think a wide receiver could have made this play work. Watch this. The Bucks defense come up. They got two guys. They missed the tackle. Damian Robinson and Derek Brooks both missing. Curtis Martin, hey, he's used to breaking tackles. He goes in and gets the touchdown. Jets looking for two here to close to 17-14 and put them within a field goal. Martin, the only back behind Testaverde. Vinny throws over the middle. He's got it. Laverne is pulled. The rookie out of Florida State makes the reception. It's a three-point game with a minute 54 to play. Let's see what they do. He is going to kick it deep. Aaron Stecker sees it bounce over his head into the end zone. He'll cover it there. And the Bucks will start from their own 20-yard line. Well, what do you know? I guess right. And... Black. And now, penalty marker, offside call against the Jets. I think the Buccaneers are declining it. Don't take a chance of returning it and having a fumble, a penalty. Offside, kicking team number 30. The penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchback. First down. Jet defense has played very well, particularly here in the second half. Now, going to have to try to stop this offense in three down. All stop to the 24 on the timeout. 148 to play. I know one thing. I'd take both of my safeties and I'd put them up there as linebackers. And if Tampa Bay decides to throw the football, then, you know, Good for them. Give them a one-on-one -on -one and see if they can make the play. Ernie Logan is on the field. Second and seven. All stop. Oh, hit hard. And the Jets say there's a loose football and that they have it, and they, they do. do. I was going to say, Greg, Randall McDaniel, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, came in with, like, their goal line running formation. He was the running back back there. I couldn't see who made the hit the cause the fumble. Look at Mike Allstead. You protecting the football. Marvin Jones, number 59, 55, gets in there and makes the hit. And then Victor Green has the loose football. And Victor Green, he's been around the football all day today. Third turnover of the day for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Jets now not with a just, just a chance to tie, but with a chance to win this game. First and 10 from the Tampa Bay 24. They have two timeouts remaining. Where they are at right now would be a 41-yard field goal to try to tie the game. Martin pucks inside and blocks inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Fox continues to move. We have a minute and a half to play. Uh, this reminds me of something that Al Grohl told us yesterday. Running the football, can you do it in the red zone, and can you do it in the fourth quarter? That's when you know you're a good running football team. And the Jets right there, lining up and getting, you know, six critical yards, not only try to score, but to get in better position for a field goal if they want to tie it up. If there has been a script for the Jets this year, it's been come from behind. Martin going to throw it to the end zone. To back. Touchdown. What a call by Dan Henney. To put the football in the hands of a running back trying to make a throw to win a football game. 
How sweet must, must this be for number 80? The object of that man's ire all week long, he refused to fire back and has pulled in what stands now to be the winning score. Well, it was a nice catch as Curtis Martin, being a running back, threw it out there and it, it wobbled quite a bit. And Wayne Corbett just adjusted to the ball and made a nice catch. But what a call. This is a most important extra point. It would force the Buccaneers to go for a touchdown rather than a game tying field goal. John Hall's kick is good. The New York Jets put 15 points on the board in the last 62 seconds and have taken a 21 17 lead. Watch Curtis Martin. They just run the football one time. Oh, and you can see. Brian Kelly, number 25, comes up for the run. And then Damian Robinson, the safety, not able to get back over there and protect him. But what a good call. You've just run the football. You pick up six yards. You come back. Oh, and a nice job by Wayne Corbett. And Vinny Testaverde says, ah, that wasn't too bad a job. Wayne Corbett picks off the latest in a bunch of floaters from the New York Jets today, but Keyshawn Johnson, oh, you know what he's thinking. Well, you know what? You know what he's thinking? It doesn't surprise him. Look, he played in that offense for a few years. He knows it does a little bit of everything. Uh, when we got ready, like we went right at the beginning of the year, we went up to the Green Bay Packers, the first game of the year the Jets had. The Green Bay Packers spent 20 minutes going over jet what they call gadget plays reverses screens people throwing the football the halfback throwing the football so everybody knows that they have the bag of tricks but the call in that situation hey even if you're ready for it, it's going to catch you by surprise and we mentioned this earlier on friday john lynch the buck safety said we are concerned about finishing the jets off teams have had them down but couldn't finish that's been the story in each of their games this season. Especially the New England game, the Green Bay game, the first game of the year. Paul reaches the end zone again. Stepper will not run it out. And so the Bucks will start from their own 20-yard line with two timeouts and 52 seconds on the clock. What a game. What a turnaround. And you know, like, listen, we sit here and do the games. It's 17 to 6. Ray Lucas goes in, doesn't get a first down. And I'm thinking, oh, well, it was still a good game. Still a good game at 17 to 6. I was happy to be here, watch it. Two solid teams. But to see the Jets react so well under the pressure again. And it's so many of those situations. I know I heard Randy Cross say it many times during the Jet preseason games. They practice a lot of these tough situations. And they're, they're getting rewarded with them or for them in the game so far this year. From the shotgun. King lost the football. The Jets say they have it. And they do. John Abraham with the hit behind the line of scrimmage. Brian Cox came up with the football. And what did we say a little earlier? Al Grohl told us yesterday John Abraham and Brian Cox, he tries not to give them too many plays during the game. So when the game is on the line in the fourth quarter, they are fresh and they can rush the passer. And we've seen it every single week. Look at number 94. This guy has some explosion. He reminds me a lot of Charles Haley, the pass rusher the San Francisco 49ers got years ago. Wayne Corbett. That about says it all. But boy, John Abraham, has he been something? Testa Verde will take a knee. You know, Greg, we saw the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I thought they'd cross a tremendous hurdle. Being taken out of the game and still coming back in and being man enough to get it done, I tell you, that's, I give him a tremendous amount of credit because most quarterbacks would go right in the tank. Keyshawn Johnson was asked if he would shake hands with Al Groh after the game. He said, absolutely not. He probably won't shake with Wayne Corbett. But he is very friendly with a number of the defensive players of the New York Jets. 
It didn't go the way that man wanted it to go today. The New York Jets with a terrific late fourth quarter comeback. 15 unanswered points in the last minute 54. Once again, our final score, the New York Jets 21, Tampa Bay 17. Coming up next on CBS, except in the Pacific time zone. Stay tuned for another fascinating 60 minutes. For Phil Sims and Armin Katayan, Greg Gumbel saying so long from Tampa. You've been watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 35.